back for another vlog but first let's start this video off with a prayer and today's prayer is dear god even when others don't see my potential and worth i know you would I know you will. Please don't let me sell myself short trying to make others around me feel comfortable. Don't let me believe anything other than I am worthy of top tier experiences. This, is, this isn't about them, it's about me. Never allow me to get cocky or big headed, but always remind me my worth in you. Certain things I shouldn't be entertaining or tolerating for my own good, Please reveal my value to me. Help me see myself the way that you see me, and I am your master, your masterpiece. Show me how to be to humbly carry it like that. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So I pray that prayer blesses you guys today. Today is Tuesday, and it's a work from learn from home day day for my kids. So they're home today. They're doing online work. They do this about once a month. So their school still do uh like online learning once a month at home which i guess they try to keep the kids used to using the computers or doing homework from the house just in case something else were to ever happen so they do that once a month um i like it i like them being home and they don't give them so much work just to give them work they handle their business and then they're done for the rest of the day so i enjoy that i have quite a few things to do today i have to wash destiny's hair we just finished Labor Day and stuff, so I didn't bother doing her hair during the weekend. But since she's going back to school tomorrow, I'm going to be working on her hair today. I've been doing laundry and stuff, so that's what I got going on. I got pretty much stuff at home to do. That's it. But I want to share something with you guys. So recently, I got this women's Bible from Amazon. Y'all, I love it so much. It's called Thrive. It's a devotional Bible for women, and this is what it looks like. When I tell you I love this so much, Destiny wants her own. Um, it's for women. I was going to get her one for teenage girls or something like that, more like in her age group. But she's adamant about getting this one. It's a beautiful book. Y'all, I'm telling you, I've read the Bible before, but I, I feel like I didn't understand it as much as I do now reading this one. So it's kind of like a study Bible. It explains it to you. The wording is more clear. Um... And it's very, very, it has the Old Testament and the New Testament on here. Look, it has a table of context. And if you're feeling some type of way, like loneliness, anxiety, and everything, it literally guides you where to go. So it has alphabetical listing of the Bible books. Um, let me see if I can find the one I was talking about. Okay, so top topical index to features. So accountability, it tells you which page to go to. It has... This is what it looks like. So aging or beauty or comfort, fear, following God, faith, everything. It tells you exactly where to go and where you will find it. It has a little um, bookmark in here and I love it. I started it a few days ago because I just, I just felt like this need to just dedicate this time to just the Lord. And I start off good and then I get so busy or I forget and I'm like, oh, I'll just do it tomorrow. Um, or I'll do it early in the morning or I get my day started. I'm like, I'll just do it later before bed, before I go to sleep. Usually before I go to sleep, I've been, it's been working out well for me, but they have chapters and they explain in the chapter. So I'm on day four. Let, uh, I'm on day four. Cause last night I did day two and three. I didn't have to do two days, but I chose to do it. And it's so well explained. So when you read the chapters right now, we're in Genesis then after that's done, it'll explain to you what happened. Okay, this is what he's saying. Okay. It is so, so clear. So when I was reading Genesis um, through the chapters, it basically said Eve was the first wife and mother. She tasted the fruit, first fruits and vegetables that God created. She was the only woman to see the world before sin polluted it. And Eve actually had a season of life when she felt no shame about her body, even though she was naked. Eve was in complete communion with God. Eve then succumbed to the dangers of listening to the twisted truth of the doubting God's words. When she took the bite of the of deception, Eve was separated from God and from her home in paradise. But even in her claws, she received a glimmer of hope. God would one day crush her deceiver and restore her brokenness. When we listen to and obey God without letting others alter his truth, 
he can use us in tremendous ways. We were created in the image of God and he loves us no matter what. So basically that after you read what you needed to read for that day, it'll explain to you what happened, how she's feeling. Um, it, it pretty much breaks it down and leaves you with each day has its own prayer. When I tell you I love this book so much, I'm going to get my daughter one. I feel like it's a beautiful gift for your mom, your grandma, your sister, anybody. Like, this is beautiful. I want to gift John his own. He has his own Bible since he was a child. Um, he still has it to this day. And he got a new Bible when he joined the military. And so he has that one. But I want him to have like a men's Bible, um, a study Bible. And... I, I think he would really, really love that. So I just wanted to share that with you guys just in case you're looking for something like this. It's in my description box under Amazon Favorites. You click on that and you will find this on there. I love it. I recommend. And it breaks it down where you don't have to read for so long to make it so overwhelming for you, especially in the day we live in now. We don't have that much time, but it'll be like just a few paragraphs and then the day is over. So it doesn't take that much time to tackle if you, and it doesn't feel overwhelming. So I wanted to share that with you guys. I love it. I've been reading this ever since I got it. Definitely, definitely good. So I'm going to get Destiny one and I feel like this is a great gift for Christmas or something like that. I'm going to get one for the boys, but I need to keep looking for the right one for them. Um, so yeah. All right, y'all. So I wanted to change something up here on the table. As much as I like the way this looks, it's not working out because we eat here. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, snack. Kids sometimes do homework here. It's becoming a problem. So I'm going to have to switch this up. I got a tray for my bedroom for now until I find the right one that will work better for here, but I have to switch this. sent me this um it came with a little picture and i thought that was so that's so cute i have the picture somewhere else but i use these for like these little spoons i thought that's so cute so i'm just gonna put that right here for now i think that works a lot better for me i like that a lot better
she always do a pre-poo, like basically conditioner with some type of oil to detangle her hair before I wash her hair. It just makes for a better experience for the both of us, okay? Um, once I do this, because when I don't do it, she screams and cries, but when I prepare her hair and detangle it and do the whole process, no tears. So, okay, update on the, this is also press on nails from kids just to let you guys know a week so far so good no popping i have a whole routine y'all like ah, i'm obsessed i'm obsessed just letting you know but i have been using gloves a lot more and stuff to keep it good you know i was using gloves before anyway but definitely now so Whew. and when i do her hair and stuff i wear gloves Especially these gloves. These are my heavy duty ones. John got some for me from Harbor Freight. I think I'm gonna see if they have them on Amazon. I love using these for cleaning. And I, you know, get rid of them once I'm done with them. But sometimes I switch up how I do her pre poo. I always use Tresemme for her because I love it for her hair and for mine. It makes the slip and detangling process so much easier. Oh, this is the one I'm using right now. I found this one at Target. I didn't see it at Walmart or Dollar General or anything like that specifically. The only place I found it was at Target for this one. I mainly used the moisture, but so far I've really been liking this one. So next time I go, I'm going to get another bottle. Make sure I'm putting enough in here. to get some more <laughs> okay. always 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 use apple cider vinegar it helps clean your scalp and it makes your curls pop so I always use this the one with the mother in it okay this time I just use, I always add oil. This time I'm just adding this one, which is the Africa's Best Herbal Oil. I switch up the oils. Depends on what I got going on. Mm, package. I'm gonna have the boys later. They're still doing homework. I mean, schoolwork, so I'm gonna have the boys later check the mail. I mean, mix this, and usually, depending on the consistency, it's like if it's too loose, I'll add more conditioner, or if it's not loose enough, I'll add more apple cider and oil. Depends on the consistency, you should have to add it. I don't pre-poo my hair, most of the time it's good, but if I feel like I need to, I'll do the same thing for myself, but mainly for hers. y'all so whenever i do both destiny hair and my own i always section it off in four sections it makes it a lot easier to work with versus the entire head at the same time uh, i even wash it that way but i've been washing her hair lately uh, in the sink in the kitchen i disinfected and everything y'all so don't don't come for me but it's just easier on my back so and she said it's a lot easier on her too it goes the process goes a lot faster so we've been enjoying that lately but pre pulling her hair has been a game changer because y'all you know, my daughter does not like getting her hair done she is very tender headed i liked the freedom that we got this past summer when she got braids she wore them for like a month and a half almost two months and it gave us some sort of freedom but um at the same time i i just in a way even though the process of washing hair and all that stuff is not my favorite, I actually enjoy that time that we get to do do stuff together. Like usually most of the time when I'm doing her hair, we're watching Disney Plus 
we've been watching Dance Moms. Now, I've been hearing about this show for years. I've never watched it, but we just clicked on it one day and we started watching it. They only have a few seasons on Disney+. Plus. And then we started watching Once Upon a Time on Disney Plus. So we put the tablet on the table and we'll just watch a show, an episode. So when it comes to these shows, we only touch it when we're doing hair. So whether I'm redoing her hair or washing it or detangling it, that's the only time we sit there and watch the shows. It just makes the time go about uh, go by a lot easier. But I do enjoy the time we do spend together while we're doing her hair. And it's just enjoyable. I don't know how much longer this will be. I know we only got maybe a few more years before she maybe starts doing her own hair. And I know the styles will change. Destiny is 10 years old. And I don't know. I usually do like twists for her hair. And I enjoy that. I can't braid to save my life. I can't do plaid and stuff like that. It's like my fingers just start doing like crib signs or something. I don't know. It just starts to get confused. So I just do twists. I prefer twists anyway. And I like when because of that, I also like the way the twists look once you untwist the hair. So I and then she can wear it out too for a few days. So I do enjoy that as well. But I do know that hairstyles probably will change once she hits middle school or something. Which, by the way, this is her last year in elementary school. So I don't know what the next year will hold. <laughs> but I'm just enjoying the time that we have together now. So at this point, I had already washed the right side of her hair. Um, so I was getting ready to work on the left side. It was nice and detangled. It was so easy, such an easy process. I used the Head & Shoulders Shampoo. Um, she suffered from itchy scalp and dandruff and stuff, and that, that has helped out a lot. I did notice that once she did get braids, it got a lot worse with the dandruff and stuff. And um, so I'm trying to get back to her scalp being right, back right again ever since she got braids. So we not gonna be doing that for a while. <laughs> but it did, she loved it, but she even told me that she she prefers her hair, her hair to be out. But for some reason, y'all, now her right side is fine. But when we wash her left side, and it happens every single time, homegirl gets the giggles and she starts giggling a lot. done finally i was going to do way more twists in this but i just don't have it in me so i just made like 
big section so we can finish easier. Luckily, it's only a three day a week for her to go to school and then I'm gonna redo her hair again this weekend. Not washing it or anything, just like redo a different hairstyle. But you're done, you're free. I wish it was one day a week. One day a week? Girl, you're, you got two free days. Well, I think that's not enough because I had to go for a whole year. <laughs> Girl, bye. <laughs> but when it's Christmas time, you get like two months. No, we don't. A week. Okay. Two weeks, I think. No, you get like four weeks. Nope, two and a half weeks. Oh. Yep, that's it. I thought it was longer than that. No. Three weeks. Almost three weeks. Hmm. <laughs> hey guys, it's now the next day and my pillow covers finally came, you guys. Oh, I love it. And the thing is, it's so soft. <laughs> So it finally came yesterday. I got them in 20 by 20. If you're looking for something like this, it's in my Amazon favorites link in my description box. They do come in a bunch of different colors. Let's say if you don't want this one, you, it comes in different colors. So just letting you guys know, but it finally came. Looking much better in here. <laughs> All right, y'all, so I'm getting more of a late start this morning, but I'm up and at it, so I'm going to be baking. Now, last year, y'all know, I'm not really into pumpkin flavor stuff. I really don't like it, um, But so, which makes me not bake anything with pumpkin in it or anything like that. But last year, uh, my kids tell me they had nothing with pumpkin flavor last year, and just because I don't like it doesn't mean they don't like it. So I guess... They want something with pumpkin in it since, you know, the season and all that is coming up. So today, I, told, I promised them last year that this year I will make them more pumpkin flavored stuff. So we are making the Starbucks pumpkin cream cheese muffins. So we're making that today for them. They don't know that I'm making it today. Normally I bake on Fridays, but I have appointments and stuff tomorrow. So I'm going to be baking today. Today is Thursday. And I'm also going to be cooking today. I am making some uh, salmon. I'm making some salmon. I'm also making some roasted potatoes and asparagus. So I'll be in the kitchen today. And of course, I'll take you guys along with that. Let's get to baking. I'm going to start measuring everything out like I normally do. And then let's get started. Of course, before I get started, I like to measure everything out. It's best to have all of your ingredients measured out so like that when it's time to just add the ingredients, it's just so much easier and you can work a lot faster. Sometimes I sift the flour, sometimes I don't. Like when if, if I'm making a cake, I will go ahead and sift the flour, but not for like muffins or anything like that or even cookies. I'm like, ain't nobody got time for all that. But if I were to make a cake, then yes, I would sift the flour. So back in the day, I used to be obsessed with the food channel and like the cooking channel. I love those shows. And I kind of, I don't want to say I kind of do now, but I do watch a lot of cooking stuff. But I just don't watch it on like the Food Network or anything. I feel like it's, it has changed over the years. I mainly watch it on Instagram and TikTok, which is crazy. Um, but back in the day, I used to watch Ina Garten. I love her. And I used to watch a lot of the baking competitions and stuff. See, now the holiday season in the, on the Cooking Network and stuff, they usually will have like the fall baking or Halloween wars and stuff like that. So like Cakes Bake Off, I love watching stuff like that, especially with the kids. But I kind of, I don't know, it's what inspired me to start baking. Because see, I start, when I first got married, I could not cook. I'm going to be honest with y'all. I could not cook. I remember I baked the chicken in the oven. The whole outside was burnt, so I thought it was done. We cut through it, and it was raw in the inside. Yeah, it was not my proudest moment. But I was determined to learn, so I was watching cooking shows. That's what got me started. I was watching cooking shows and baking shows, and I just followed the recipe. Now, it used to be intimidating for me, but I don't know who said this, but someone... On there, on there said, um, sorry y'all, I just got a notification. But someone on there said, if you know how to read, then you you should know how to you know how to cook and you know how to bake. As long as you follow the directions and just don't do what you want to do. If you don't know what you're doing, then you know what you what to do. So I went with that philosophy and I've messed up so many recipes. I have. I remember. There was this um, cookbook that I got. It was like a soul food cookbook. It was my second year I've been married. That's before I even had kids. John and I waited like three years before we, we even had started having kids. But anyways, so I had plenty of time to experiment. 
I was determined to make this caramel cake. We used to live in Colorado up in the mountains, so you know the elevation is a little different up there. Like the baking temperature and stuff is just not the same. And a lot of times when you live in like places with high elevation, your cake falls and it, it just does not turn out. So I was determined to make this caramel cake and I did the recipe three times and all three times the recipe, like the batter was spilled over in the oven. And I was so determined that every time the batter will spill over in the oven, I would clean the whole oven. Oh my God, I can't believe I was doing this. I would clean the oven, so that's how you know I didn't have kids. And then do the recipe again and it will happen again. And then I would wait till it cools off, clean the oven again and try the recipe again and it would do it all over again. I did it three times that day. I was in such a bad mood, I cried. And I didn't understand why the recipe would not turn out even though I was doing everything by the book. A few years later is when I realized it's because of the elevation. So I kind of had to switch things up from the recipe. I just did not know how. Now I know, but it's not like I live there anyway. Uh, but yeah, y'all, I've had some stories, but I've messed up so many stuff, I, so many recipes and wasted so many ingredients, but I was determined to figure it out and I'm so glad that I did. So I got these cupcake baking liners from Amazon. I love them because I wanted to give it more like a bakery style feel to it. So I'm excited. It's crazy the things that make me happy. Let me take this part out to show you guys what it looks like. It looks like it came oh, come from a bakery. I thought this was so cute. Look at these, y'all. Look at these. So I might. It's, it, they're like liners. Yeah, they're liners. So they're eco-friendly, reliable materials, food grade, and heat resistant up to 125 degrees. So um, I'm gonna use these for the cupcakes. Not the cupcakes, the muffins. one whole block of cream cheese which is eight ounces I'm getting ready to add four uh, tablespoons of sugar two teaspoons of all-purpose flour two teaspoons of milk and then one teaspoon of vanilla extract We're going to mix all that together to put those in the cupcakes.
right here I am putting the cream cheese filling inside of a Ziploc bag which that's something you can do I was planning on using my piping bag instead with the little tips I should have went that route because I am very messy I am very messy so when I cut the tip for the Ziploc bag I did not cut it correctly so it was coming out of two two ends out of like two whole circles and man when I tell you I made a huge mess it was all in my fingers and everything and they didn't look as pretty Everything was fine, but it did not look as pretty. It looked a hot mess. I tried to fix it as best as I could with a little butter knife. But if you have a piping bag, I would go that route, but I'm pretty messy. I should have went that route. I just like, I was like, oh, that's something else I got to clean. Because you guys, when I film any baking or cooking, I make a lot of dishes because everything has to look pretty for y'all. So I put everything separate in, in its own dish and whatever, which means that's more dishes for me to wash, which is fine. I enjoy it. You know, that's how I like things to look. But that creates, of course, more dishes. Well, anyways, that piping bag, I'm like, oh, come on. Even though it's disposable, I don't know what I was thinking. I should have went with that route, y'all. <laughs> some uh, baby potatoes in the oven I want to thank again Miss Cheryl for sending this casserole dish um, for me to me around Christmas time last year thank you I love using it and I'm hoping it's big enough to roast these potatoes normally I cut them in half these are baby potatoes cut them from Aldi normally I cut them in half but they're so tiny y'all like they're really small so I'm hoping I can fit them in here is that gonna be enough yeah that's gonna be good and usually when I roast them, I keep it pretty simple. I like to add some olive oil. And I add a lot of olive oil. And drizzle that on there. Make sure I drizzle enough. go to TJ Maxx I always check the seasoning section because I love the seasoning especially the jars that they come in I'm gonna be using the garlic and onion spice blend it only got a little bit left in the past two times I went they don't have they haven't been having these so I'm gonna go check again tomorrow because my friend Diana's bridal showers this weekend and Angelique and I got to go there to get her gifts and I'm also gonna use the rose vegetables, vegetables and fries spice blend. Gotta get some more, it's very, we got a little bit, oh my gosh. So sometimes I switch the seasonings that I use here. Sometimes I go more for the garlic cookie type of route. So you can add whatever seasonings you want. Sometimes I add garlic, salt, and stuff like that. Paprika. Which I think that's what's in here anyway. Let me see. It has salt, wet, red bell pepper, paprika, sugar, onion, soybean, garlic, mustard, black pepper, celery seed, coriander, oregano, cumin, and sage. This one has, what this one has? Garlic, about 46%. It has salt, onion, powder, red bell pepper, sugar, carrots, turmeric. Parsley, black pepper, coriander, oregano, cumin, sage, and chives. So, open this one too, and then we're gonna try to stir this up. It's pretty tight in here. Okay, some parsley. Let me try to stir this, not stir this, but move this around. because all ovens are different. I just cook mine for an hour and then I take it out and call it a day. 
put that in there now. Y'all, so tonight's dinner we're having roasted potatoes, which is already in the oven. Um, asparagus, I seasoned the asparagus exactly how I did the potatoes, so I didn't really show you guys that. But we're having Atlantic salmon. This ain't gonna be in, uh, it's gonna be enough for us tonight, but this is not gonna give us leftovers. I already know, but it's nice and clean and I sliced it. I'm getting ready to add that to the cast iron. So the salmon is going to cook in the oven as well. I'm just waiting for the potatoes and stuff to finish. Thank you again for sending me these tongues. I've been using them every chance I get. So I'm going to add this in here and then I'm going to show you guys what I made to pour over top. Everything is so expensive. Meat is expensive. Fish is expensive. Now salmon is my absolute number one favorite fish. Let me know down in the comments. Which is your favorite fish that you like to eat? John's favorite is actually a uh, catfish. Put this over here, I have these little pieces. I didn't wanna waste. And then he likes tilapia and whiting, I think he said. I prefer salmon. I love, love salmon. I just don't like the skin, like the skin that comes at the bottom. I always cut, like take it off. Might be weird, I don't know. I just don't like the scales, I like the skin and stuff. Move this over here, so it don't be overlapping. Okay, and then right here, what I have is olive oil. I didn't measure at all. I, I, I did measure the t Dijon mustard, which is two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. The recipe will be down in my description box if you prefer to go by the recipe. I added a whole lemon in here. So I have lemon juice and I have salt and pepper in here. And what else? What else do I have in here? Garlic, some garlic. So I'm gonna pour this over top. And this is for when the salmon is cooking. And then I have something else to pour over top of it later. Oh, it's gonna be so good. This cast iron skillet comes from Walmart. You guys always ask me about it, it because it's huge. And um, it's come, if you check the camping section, this is where you'll find it. It was because I think this was $25. It should still be the same price because I've had this thing for like two years. Make sure I made enough so that should be good. And then you cook this in the oven 400, at 425 degrees. some butter this is the butter that's going to go over top of the salmon once it's finished i'm going to also add some garlic in here some minced garlic i'm going to let that melt and then what i'm going to do is just let that get um about a few seconds till it all meant to let it get it all fragrant and stuff make it smell good all right y'all now that the butter is melted we're going to add some heavy cream this is half a cup of heavy cream and we're going to bring this to a boil so i'm going to let the heat go up a little bit and mix this up and we're going to wait till this thickens up a little bit it doesn't take very long now that the sauce has thicken up, I took it off of the, the hot side of the stove. I turned off the stove. Dinner is almost done, which I'm looking forward to, to be finished. Kids coming home soon. And just add some lemon juice. I did not measure. If you feel more comfortable with measuring, go right ahead. Add a little lemon juice. So I'm gonna also add some salt and pepper. So I'm gonna add some pepper first. Just a little bit. I'm also gonna add some kosher salt. I like using kosher salt. Okay. And some parsley. It's better to use fresh parsley. I don't have that, so I'm using dried parsley. And then mix that together. And then that's it.
All right, y'all, so I just pulled out the salmon and it asked for you to pour this over the salmon. Oop, try not to put too much on just one. And just let it rest for five to 10 minutes, which I'm not gonna mess with this right now. It's not the end of time yet anyway. Okay, everybody's covered. Okay, good. This big piece right there, I already know it's gonna be John's piece. <laughs> Everything is good to go. I just don't want to waste anything. All right. And just let it sit there for five to ten minutes, which is going to be sitting there for a lot longer. It's not time to eat yet. It, dinner is done early which is how I like it I love dinner out of the way so that is finished I do have to wash some dishes so I'm getting ready to do that now but I hope you all enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and keep a lookout for my next videos you guys bye y'all